Welcome back to Research in Action. This is Nita at Ontario Westward, and I'm here with... Scamp Widegrin, or my full name in the essay is Doctore Decimus Varius Felix, also known as Scamp. Uh, I'm from Three Mountains area, uh, where I do most of my playing in Ontario, Portland, Oregon. And uh, my inspiration in most things is uh, my lady wife, uh, Vivian Nickledew. So, Scamp, tell me, what brings you joy in the SCA? Oh man, the SCA is fantastic. It's got so many opportunities, so many rabbit holes. You can find your fun in so many ways. If cooking is your jam, if fighting is your jam, if figuring out how to do any sort of thing that happened in period. Whether it's crafting, making, speaking. The research is something I really enjoy. The thing that gives me most joy in the SCA is the opportunity to recognize people doing things that could uh, a lot of times people spend a lot of energy and a lot of time working on something beautiful, whether that's a larger event that everyone wants to share, or whether it's something they craft by themselves in the dark of their lab for hours. When they finally get a chance to reveal that and share it with a larger society, we're a sharing society, but we don't always do a great job of recognizing people who spend that time and that love on things. So one of the things that I've sort of gotten a reputation for that I really, really relish doing and looking forward to and volunteer to do as often as possible is writing and performing ceremonies for people in the persona of their chosen personas in history. So I've, I've gotten to do Mayagar, I've gotten to do Hungarian, I've gotten to do late Irish, I've gotten to do early Irish, I've gotten to do Roman. And being able to do those sort of research rabbit holes and attach the story to the actual history so that I can appreciate someone who's worked hard for the society. That's one of my all-time favorite things. My other passion is storytelling, and so they kind of dovetail nicely when I go find a story that's something that moves people. Stories are universal. They're, they're, they're how we tell ourselves what we ourselves look like, both now and in the past. It's how we pass the time of fire. Other people have different opinions on it, but I think it's the, one of the hearts, one of the beating hearts of the SCA is the nighttime fire, the ability to tell those stories to ourselves, to each other. It captures our history that we're creating since the 60s. It captures the cool thing that happened this year on the tourney field, or in the artisan's village, or even just in a quiet moment at camp with friends. Those are the stories that keep us going. And I, for me, at least, one of the things that's kept me coming back for, this is my 28th year in the SCA, and uh, it was the stories that captured me, it's the stories that keep me returning. Um, I try to add another story to my repertoire every year, so it never gets an old hat. Uh, I'm known for a couple specific stories people ask for. Uh, someday I'll turn it all into a big cycle, so they're all attached to the interconnected stories. But uh, I just love that fact that you can tell a story about a blacksmith and his experience with the supernatural. And that story, the kernel, that, that, that internal core of that story exists across the world. There's African versions of that story. There are Chinese versions of that story. There's Scandinavian, English versions of that story. There's stories that are told in the uh, southwest of America um, during the frontier years. There's First Nations people have stories of people working with fire and fighting the supernatural. And the fact that you can find those through lines means you can also flip some of the details. So if you take a story that was born about an empire and an emperor looking for an heir and your persona is Chinese, you can tell that story. Or if it's you know, Persian, you can tell it from a Persian lens, or you can tell it from a Roman lens. Um, currently, I'm taking a lot of pleasure in uh, researching Britannic Romanian, uh, Romanian, Roman Britannic culture in the first century AD. So where that intersection of cultures clashed, collided, and then started melting together and some of the norms that changed and shifted. And all that comes out in the story. And it's, it's beautiful because it's such a human experience, this idea that you want to tell a tale that has heroes in it, that has trials in it, that has high stakes and high rewards or sorrow. I mean, nothing connects me to people more than when I'm in front of a group of people who are sharing out stories and songs and tales together. Some people get really, really into the weeds on, well, this is exactly how the story would have been told in period. This is exactly the materials they would have used as props in their story. And there's other people who just kind of magpie up all the pieces, you know. It's shiny, and so I'm going to put it in my next story. Or, I've never heard that tale of Loki ever told before. We're kind of a rare, weird breed. We're not, when we tell our stories, finding time and a space that fits where we're at means we also have to be sort of social chameleons. If we're good at it, I mean, there, there's definitely a learning curve to being a good storyteller. Being able to find a space where 
you read the crowd, you read the evening, you read the energy of the, the, the night, and then you pick the story that fits like a Lego block, mm-hmm. or a Tetris block, so yeah. it, it makes sense with who's there. That's, that's, that, that problem solving, that kind of live art is something that really keeps me coming back to the things. And you're really good at it. I appreciate that. It's, it's been a lot of fun, and it's, it's, the thing that keeps it fresh is picking that one new story. And sometimes I'll try a story out, and it will, it'll collapse like a flan in the cupboard. And sometimes it'll be the thing that just blows people away. One of my all-time favorite stories uh, is actually about the SCA. Um, uh, there's one I tell that's about my first SCA experience that feels like a type purple. It feels like I'm making stories up, like this, 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 I'm just pulling fantastical elements that could never happen in real life. But honestly, it was my very first SCA experience. That's how I got hooked to the SCA all this time. Uh, I was in a play in high school called Brigadoon, of course, set in the Scottish Highlands, and there's magic involved. It came out of the 50s, a musical. Movie. And so at the time I had a kilt when my first, uh, the older brother-in-law of one of my best friends in high school took us to our first SCA event called Eggles, uh, happens at the summits in Ontario. And uh, I was waiting in line, this is one of the people who come to your clipboard to help fill out all your paperwork like this long line of cars streaming down the road. I said, uh, they asked me my, my, my mundane name, and I said, Chris Santoro. I said, what's your SCA name? And I said, my best high school play, Scottish Baroque, Cedric Macmillan. And uh, she looks over her shoulder and says, we got another Cedric. My heart shattered. I'm like, oh, I gotta find a better name. All right, Scamp. Scamp's my name because it was a D&D character I was playing at the time. So I'm, I'm gonna be Scamp Widegreen and the rest they say is history. But I then got to the site, set up a tent, was wearing my kilt proudly and running around, and then as many people, young folks and old, was drawn to the blacksmith who actually had uh, two strikers who were beating out a, a Scottish claimant because Braveheart had just come out and he couldn't sell them fast enough. So he's out this fire and it's, it's just about now, about, a, about 30 minutes from sunset, and uh, he has these two big, burly, thick armed bearded, be-kilted strikers with big heavy hammers, and he himself had a smaller hand hammer. And they were banging on this anvil with sparks just flying everywhere. Bang, ba-bang, ting. Bang, bang, ting. Bang, bang, ting. Striker, striker, smith. Striker, striker, smith. And it was beautiful to watch this thing sort of unveil itself, and I wasn't the only one. They started drawing a crowd. As you know, it makes sense. Good business. Bring people in to look at the swords. Sparks flying. Right. Yeah. But it got so special because then a piper comes walking out and it's you know not necessarily in period but it was a bagpiper who knew his business and he wanted to play to the striking of the hammers mm-hmm. bang bang ting bang bang ting i'll spare you my bagpipe uh, rendition uh but then a drummer came out and it was a german land connect group and they were a performance group so they really knew how to drum and they had the big kettle war drum they were just banging on them and then an Irish player came out with a bodrum, you know, a skin drum, played with a little, uh, I forget what the striker's called, <laughs> spoon, whatever. And so now you got a drummer and a piper, and they're playing with a blacksmith. And then two women, in my in my 17-year-old eyes, visions of gorgeousness came out. And they asked the blacksmith's wife, who was behind the counter, if they could borrow two swords with sheets. And she said, sure. And they pulled them out, and they set them on the ground, and they then danced the sword dance. So now you've got bang, bang, ting, bang, bang, ting. The drummer's boom, ba da boom, boom, ba da boom, boom, ba da boom, 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 And the drummers, and you have a Middle Eastern drummer comes out. He's playing his, um, oh, his doom back. And it's taka taka doom doom, taka taka doom doom, taka taka doom doom. And the girls begin to dance this Highland sword dance. And one is dressed in traditional Highland garb from gillies to bemoral to sporin, green, um, um, uh, McGregor plaid, just looked fantastic, bright, beautiful white linens. And then you had another woman who was dressed uh, as a Bedouin um, belly dancer. So head to toe, silk, silks and scarves, and she had her zills that she began to play as well. And it's dark now, and the sun starts going down, and it's the sparks are still flying. The forge is glowing orange. Two women are whirling in the darkness, and there's music that I've never heard and intersected in all at the same time. And I'm a bug on the wall watching this unfold before me. And this is my first night and my first event as a 17 year old, and I was just lost. There was no way I wasn't going to do this for the rest of my life. And being able to transport people to the 
those moments. I often tell the story and say, try to be someone's magic first time in the museum. Show them something they've never seen before. Let them see wonder that they don't find on Netflix, that they don't find on the internet, that they don't find in all the fantasy novels they've ever read. Because this thing we build together, and this thing we talk about, and this thing we see together, it's it's the purest thing I've found. And I'm, I've, I've been a churchgoer since my childhood. I, I go to church far less now, but this is my church. These are my people. This is my congregation. This is where I get these fine connection to something true and honest and sort of lasting. It's, it keeps me going in my mundane life when other things go smoothly. Uh, this idea of sharing, this idea of building community just really keeps coming back to me. And, uh, even on my slow days and my tired days, I can usually scare up a little bit of go-go. If someone says, hey, Scamp, tell us a story, that's, that's winning. That's, that's success in life. And, uh, that's, that's, that's my joy in the SEA. Thank you very much. I'm so happy you were here. Appreciate it. Let's have a hug. Fun time. All right.